this is Sean Brown for Boxing Social. Delighted to be speaking to Anthony Bowler, fresh from his victory on Saturday night. Anthony, how are you? I'm all good, thanks, Sean. How are you, mate? Not too bad, not too bad. How's things been since your <clears throat> win on Saturday night? Good, cool, mate. Um, I'm a, I mean, no, I'm after a fight, you're a bit achy. But because um, it was a short sure fight, I haven't been too bad. But I have ever saw Joe there, he, he caught me around too. It was, it was, been, a, it was been a good shot because I um, never just saw Joe in my life before. It's a fight, so it must have hit me around the button. But uh, apart from that, I'm fine. Good. Um, looking back at the fight itself, um, you must be very satisfied with how you fought, especially. Definitely, I thought I thought him before the fight he'd be he'd be tricky and he he was he was quick he was elusive he had good defence but um I just stayed patient in there I bothered me time I was working the body early on and um I got him out there a lot quicker than what I thought I thought it could have been at, um I said, I said to Shane before the fight I made a couple of the points there and Shane went I have the six rounds you're gonna get to him and um, shake him up and it happened a bit it happened a bit quicker than what we thought. Now obviously um. Straight after you had won the fight, there was a lot of talk about what's next, as is always the case. And uh -huh. names were mentioned like um, Sergio Garcia, the winner of Cheeseman Metcalf, and your old foe, Scott Fitzgerald too. Um, if you could pick, who would it be, Anthony? Personally, now I'd I'd love to um the Metcalf season winner myself because um right. I want that British, I want that British title. Shane's home. He's never he's never had the British champion, which is quite mad. So yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to be Shane's first one, even though he'd probably say go for the European. I, I personally like to fight for the British title, but at the end of the day, I, I'm just a boxer. Shane's my manager and my coach. If he, if he says Garcia, then that's then that's it. But um, I don't think Fitzgerald's gonna fight as well, mate. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not, I'm not convinced he's gonna. He's gonna come back. They were saying April tenth, now the same May first. Yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced he's gonna fight again, mate, anytime soon. So I'm not waiting man for him. I'm just gonna keep moving on my career. I feel as though I'm in, I'm in a really good place now in life. Me, me whole life, me personal life, me career, me relationship, me coach, me boxing. Everything just come together really, really well for me. So I just feel in a really good place, and I, I want to keep pushing on and keep keep improving and keep building. And obviously that fight between. Metcalf and Cheeseman takes place this Saturday. Your yeah. thoughts on the fight and how it all yeah. actually play out? I, mean, I, keep, I, honestly, I keep changing my mind on her all the time. <laughs> I had, at one point, I thought Metcalf's a stronger fight. He's a bit more like mature, a bit stronger the way I think Metcalf might beat him. And now I'm thinking Cheeseman's got the experience. Metcalf hasn't boxed like 14 months or so. And might be a bit rusty. Maybe Cheeseman can get, can get it on points. It's a really intriguing fight, and I think it'll be a really close, hard for fight. But um, I'm, I'm hoping Metcalf comes through. Yeah, uh, uh, so that you get an all scouts battle, yeah. Yeah, it'd be that. That'll be brave. Maybe to say it'd be, it'd be a massive uh, occasion. It's been a long time. I think it's been a, a long time since the likes of like Paul Smith and Dale Boxing for the British title in the in the arena. Yeah, this will be this will be the next like the next like the next generation. So um. I'd love to be part of it, and I think it'd be. I think my man and Metcalf style, which I'll be really nice as well, be a good fan for any fight. So, I'd love that myself. And is Metcalf someone that you know or have sparred before? Yeah, I sparred him a few years ago. Um, I was the amateur. I think he was pro, yeah. and he's a nice lad. He's he's just really quiet fellow. He is. He just come on the gym on his own. They're respectful. We had a six round spa, just just, just a mass spa. You can't, a lot of people say a lot, a lot from sparring, but I don't. Sparring and fighting so different. What I mean, but it was a good even spa. We had a good little spa. And um, yeah, he was fine, mate. He was a nice lad, but there's not really no bad blood in there. I might, I might be half. And like, I'm trying to the bad blood out of me, out of me boxing. I think I've right. got involved once where it was personal and I, I think it went against me. I think. I think I perform better when I'm calm and I'm and I'm patient and I'm my head's there, not I'm not fighting with my heart and acting all daft, screaming and shouting. I, I, I like to just stay a bit more focused now and a bit more like professional rather than all that slagging back and forth and stuff. I'm, I think I'm done with all that. And um, as for moving forward, obviously you spoke that you would like the winner of Cheeseman Metcalf, but someone like Sergio Garcia must be in your um plans to at some point for this year. 
Definitely, yeah. I, that, that fight I had with um, Forte, yeah. that was one was going to let me know where I'm at, everything. I said, that's what I said all week. I was like, he's, he just went 12 rounds with the IVF number one. He's tough, durable. He's, he's the wrong style for me. My style, I, I have people to come at me who are like a lot, of, a lot, a lot more straightforward, the likes of Cheeseman and McCarthy will come at me. That'll suit me more, whereas he was the opposite. He was moving, he was elusive, he was quick. He was a bad style for me on paper, but I showed the improvements I've made. I was patient, I was behind my job. I was making him fall short rather than me falling short. And um, yeah, I think that that fight talk showed me that I'm ready. And I, I, I believe there was anyway, but it's nice to get confirmation. It's, it's all good doing in the gym and you're sparring great. Everyone's going, oh, you're doing well. But when you actually fight, you, you know where you're at because fighting's fighting. And even though you've obviously had a fantastic win from Saturday night, if we go back to 2020 and what was going on outside of boxing for everyone, how was that year for you overall? You know what? It went as bad for me, mate. I'm not going to lie. It went, it went as bad for me. Like, all that happened to me last year was um, I couldn't really go for like food. I couldn't really like, yeah. see my friends as much. But apart from that, me... I, I got two fights in. I, w- I would have actually would have boxed again. Eddie offered me a fight on the Zora bill, but um, I am getting injured and I was a bit heavy as well at the time. He had to sprung it on me. So I, I probably would have had three fights last year if I weren't injured. And like, in some ways, it was nice because I got to have a bit of time with my girlfriend at home. We got, I, got to, I got to just stay in the pool for a few months and just chill with my girlfriend. And just like, I, I'm always away in Kent on my own or I was in Sheffield on my own. So just being home for a few months and just having like, a bit of a normal life. It was nice for me as well, to be fair. It was a nice little change. And um, do you think that performance on Saturday night is one that we've that we've all been waiting for? Because since you t- turned pro, there was obviously a, a lot of expectation of what you might achieve. And on Saturday, we definitely saw what you could possibly go on to do. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think with me, <laughs> In my career so far, I, I, I went from it being too easy for me to start. I was, I was getting given a lot of journeymen. They were all like tough journeymen and stuff, but they were all they were on, on my level. So I was I was just walking out there. And it, was just, it was just a kill mission. It was just to go out there and try and stop them. I went trying to win the fight. And then obviously when I when I boxed Scott, I had the same the same mindset to go out there and knock him out. And give me his due, mate. He, he took everything I had. He, he was smart. I went. I was, trying, I was loading up. He was just trying to pick a shot. And he, he done well. He, he, got, he got the win. After that, I think it, it, it hit me hard that defeat it. it took away a lot of my confidence and stuff. Like I thought I was unbeatable, and then to get beat so early on in my career, it made me doubt myself. And then the next two fights I had with Dave was against Brian Rose, which I thought I boxed well against Brian Rose, but I was still a bit hesitant to like to like put too much into it. I was holding back a lot too much. I, I potentially could have stopped him, but I tried to put it on him a bit more. But I was a bit paranoid about like getting tired or getting out boxed. And against Harry Scarf, I just thought I didn't box well at all. I thought like he was it was really tricky for me. And I, I was again, I was trying to hold back. I was a bit too paranoid about getting it, where I should have been a bit more ambitious and probably could have stopped him as well. So I felt as though that's what I, I felt as though like this isn't me really going to where, the way I planned in my pro career. I'm not really just gonna achieve what I, what I was hoping to achieve. So that's when I made the change. And I think since then. Obviously, my first fight was a, bit, was a bit of a laughable fight against that Tete. It was just that was just, it, it was what it was what it was. I always laugh when I think about it because it was funny. But like the last two fights, I boxed Adam Harper, who's he went twelve rounds with Sarafa, who's a world right middleweight. He went twelve rounds. I, I destroyed him, but like punched him out, punched him out of him, stopped him in seven rounds, and again with again with four tire. He was a good, experienced opponent who like like how he said like eighteen months old to give me nightmares it would have been a really hard fight like another Harry Scar. Would have been a hard fight for me. Possibly would have beat him on points sort of, or got out box. Would have been a hard fight for me. Whereas I've just out, I outclassed him in some ways. It was mm-hmm. it was competitive early on, but I always was getting the last say in the matter. I was landing the better shots, and then as soon as I landed it clean, I got him out of there. So I think I've shown me potential the last the last two fights, which I, it was always in me. But now I'm starting yeah. to show it. Do you know what I mean? But I, again, it's it's been it takes a while to adapt. Do you know what I mean? Like. I, I had a lot of expectation on myself when I first turned pro, and it's a different game to the amateurs. I was I was amateur for fifteen years, which people forget. So it took me a little bit, a little bit of a while to get out of that like three rounds of all guns blazing. And that's so what now now I have like adapted. I think fully, I can I can do twelve rounds at a good pace, and I'm more I'm more controlled. And we've um obviously 
spoken about Scott and what happened in that fight. And you mentioned at the time that there was bad blood. Um, it's obviously public record as to what Scott has been through since. Um, do you still have the bad blood there or have you moved on? No, I, I've moved on. To be fair, it's quite funny because there was not there was no bad blood at the start anyway. I, I have caused it. Someone, <laughs> someone, someone on my team told me to say something to him and I had to wear to try and like get under his skin. Yeah. Yeah. There was no bad blood. Me, me and Scott were fine. It's probably what I've made, if anything. So I said something to him in the press conference. It was something like, I'm going to knock it out. or something on the mind. But I said, I said it quite like, so I get into his head. Yeah. And he, 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 he asked us to bait him. was going a bit yeah. off his head. And then, then he started like, saying like personal things then on like, Twitter and stuff. Like, he half like, went below the belt. I was talking about the box and he, he was bringing like, girlfriends and family into it and stuff. So it got a, they get a bit personal yeah. and then, then, it, then it become real. So I, that's what sort I of think it went wrong for me when it when it become like really personal to me. I think that's what made my head go a little bit because I'm used mm. to that. I've never be never before me life boxed someone. I wanted to say to hurt them. Like I wanted to really hurt the guy. Yeah. So I think that's I think that went against me. But I think like <laughs> I think it was just a bit mad. It just it just it just escalated really really quick. No, no one's like these days on social media. <laughs> Everything jumps on a bandwagon and goes up. up, yeah. up. Yeah, so like, that's what happened. But it's only words that everything got done. And the end of the day, he gave me respect in the gym. He, he took it in the gym, in the ring. I hit him and everything. He took it. He come back to me. He boxed a great game plan. He was really tough. If you look at his face after that fight, he talked a lot. And like, I get, I'm, I'm, after that fight, me, my hands were like, my hands were so bruised of punching him. So I thought that respect for him as a fighter now because he, he showed me how tough he is. And mm-hmm. that, that mental strength he showed in that fight to go through what he went through. So there's no there's no bad blood now. I think I've squashed it, but I would like to just prove that I'm, I'm a better fighter than him. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to just prove that, like, you know what, Scott? You had your night. We boxed 10 times. I'll win now. You won one. That was your win. We box again. I'm going to beat you. But it won't be no, like, animosity on my behalf. If he wants to start talking all that, he talk, he'll be talking to himself this time. I'm just going to get in the gym, get in the gym and chain, keep me head down, get myself fit, get me weight down, come up with a game plan and, and go and execute it in the night and just, I'll box him and get the win. That's that's what my that's all happen in my opinion. If he box again, but it's if he's even gonna fight again, mate. Because I keep hearing all these things about him. Like he's not in the gym, he's overweight. I don't really care anymore. I just wanna yeah. keep moving forward now. And yeah. like there's the likes of Mecca achievement, it's a massive fight. Mm-hmm. I don't need for Cerro to be to be a success. He, yeah, I don't need I don't need to beat him. And since you have been working with Shane, how would you say that you have evolved? as a fighter, because on Saturday night you did seem to be much more patient in what you're doing. Yeah, I, I have said to him, people people in the gym, if you watch me spy, it's like it just clicked for me. It might sound mad, like it, like it just clicked. Even like when I used to do Dave, I remember like Dave called us after as far sometimes, he'd be saying to me, you're not like, you're not going to get to the top unless you start like adapting to the rounds and you're putting too much into the shots and stuff. And I was thinking, I feel so I'm doing well, I feel so I'm doing the rounds well, but I was putting too much into the shots. I was like, right. I was trying to like knock people out every single round. I went like patiently breaking them down and being smart. But again, it was a, it was a big change. I went from three rounds in amateurs to 12 rounds or 10 rounds as a pro. So it was a bit of a change. It takes time to adapt. Do you know what I mean? And I, I got, I got, I'm obviously an Olympian. Mm-hmm. I got through into the way. When I boxed Scott, I'd been pro 18 months. I, I never had a chance to learn, that, learn me trade as much as I would have liked. Where some fighters, Get a few years of like boxing journey and slowly bring up build themselves up. I went I went straight into a title fight after nine fights and I went I went ready back then. But now I have it after now I am a I am a twelve round fighter now. So it's like it's like it's clicked for me and it's, it's happened in the gym before. So you you seen it on the night, but yeah, the last like six six months or so in the gym I felt it. I felt like I'm doing twelve rounds with four different lads and I'm doing it easy and I'm controlled and I'm not boxing them and I'm not getting it as much. I've already done it behind closed doors and you've all seen it a little bit. Obviously, four tables wasn't meant to beat me, but people like Sergio Garcia, people are going to say, he's going to be Fowler. That's what, that's what I want. I want I want to be up against it where people are happy to prove people wrong this time rather than like go in there, the heavy favourite all the time. And one last thing to ask you. Um, you spoke about how you keep changing your mind between the Metcalf and she's winner yeah. right now on the spot, who wins? I'm just hoping Metcalf comes through on a, on a hard fourth point position because I think Metcalf is a stronger man. 
And the pen, I think she's on my trying out box from Eddie, but if Metcalf can make it his fight, I think Metcalf can win it. Great. Okay, Anthony, thank you very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Have a nice day. Thank you. <laughs>